Baylor has its new defensive coordinator in Matt Powell, but it's not exactly a home run. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I'm Drake Tolp from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. The Bears have a new defensive coordinator in Matt Powledge, and it's not a home run hire. Um, I I like it. I like this hire. The, The buzz that it's gotten from former players, from coaches that have been around Powledge is great. But when I think home run, I think 20-year coaching vet, someone who's been a head coach, someone who's got a lot of rapport in the game. And I think Powell has some rapport, but compared to getting the former head coaches that were on the short list that I was looking at, this isn't a home run. It is a solid late-inning ground rule double. It's not going to clear the bases, but it's going to get you some run ho- runs home, get some run support, and I, I think it pushes the needle in recruiting enough for Baylor's defense to be successful next year. Maybe not as much out of the transfer portal as I wanted with a hire like Jim Leonard, where I think Baylor would have gotten a lot of transfers out of Wisconsin for guys that really like him because of the tenure he spent in Madison. But you still get young, energetic, someone who can be molded by Dave Aranda. And in that, I like this hire. So I... I want to go back to the first thing. What we settle in, which Matt Moses is going to join the show here in the middle segment, but I first want to settle in on this is a kind of a new era of the Aranda Aranda defensive defensive tenure because, and I want to be careful how I say this. Ron Roberts was was fired. Aranda had talked a lot this season about coaches who had off the field issues where it came to ego or getting in the way or players couldn't focus because the coaches were, were kind of feeding it, feeding themselves. There's arrogance there. And then the first coach to be fired is Ron Roberts makes you think he probably fit the mold of the guys that Aranda was discussing who weren't quite there. So now you get, Instead of an older coach like Roberts, a younger guy who is more malleable, who Dave Aranda can have a little bit more say in the defense, and Aranda can truly be the head coach of the unit, and at the same time be a really likable character. I've talked to a couple former players, players' parents, who said that this is a great hire. I won't reveal my source as far as this player's parent goes, but a direct quote, I think it's an excellent hire. That guy came into Baylor and had no favorites. He coached those safeties up and made them better. He found a role for each one. He respected them. The player, the guy's son, said he told him a long time ago how good he was and that you talk about guys like Jalen Petrie and Jaron McVay and JT Woods, even into Terrell Bernard, who had Powellage influence. And I I think that goes a long way for Baylor. And that's not a bad guy with any bad associations to bring back into this program. Now, I when I think Matt Powellage, I think a report card that needs to be filled out has three main things. One being recruiting in the transfer portal. That's Baylor needs to flip a defense that was in the bottom half of the conference last year in like every category. They couldn't stop the run. They couldn't really stop the pass. They couldn't really stop opposing offenses. That probably needs to change for your defense under Matt Powell. So bringing him in, my number one thing on the report card is transfer portal. Flip the defense. Get some guys in here where you're seeing already the offensive side of the ball. Baylor's reloading on the O-line with the Barrington brothers. They got Richardson at running back as well. Now the defensive side, you're still missing kind of your marquee transfer portal guys. Go attack the ones that are still left. Bring some guys from Oregon if you can. And that touches on, again, how I Jim Leonard had spent so long at Wisconsin, built so many relationships. I think he could have brought more guys. I mean, Powell is only Oregon for a year, so I don't know how many players will stick their neck out and follow him. But go prove 
prove, prove your worth in the transfer portal. Then my second thing on the report card, how well can this hire Matt Pallage recruit high school kids out of Texas? He's got a lot of Texas ties. He played at Sam Houston state, obviously coached at Baylor for two seasons under Dave Aranda. So there's familiarity with Waco and this program. The guy's probably been to Georgia's. That's a good thing. Coached with Dan Lanning at Oregon and brought in Texas players to Oregon. One of the ones that I circled out of San Antonio Brennan high school was Tyler Turner, a safety who I think will be really good for Oregon and could be really good for Baylor if he'd like to just come on down to Waco instead. Can Powell keep that going? He knows Texas. He's got to be, and I don't want to play a complete comparison game because no one can be, but someone needs to be the Joey McGuire of this staff. There's a hole there. Texas Tech got to the finish line of recruiting. Baylor did not in the class of 23. You need a new young, energetic spark of life in this program to help bring back stability in recruiting that Joey McGuire gave you for so many years. Matt Powledge has to be that guy. I still think transfer portal recruiting is number one with his hire. That's what he's going to have to do best immediately. But two, and very important, you've got to go after young Texas high school football players immediately. I say young because you need to be the guy that's there with the first or second offer, get a bug in their ear quick. Otherwise, they're going to go to A&M, take money and go to Texas, go to Oklahoma. Even at this point, Texas Tech TCU. Powellage has to be a catalyst in high school recruiting in the state of Texas. And then third, look, those are the two biggest things for me. Can Matt Powellage bring those two things to the table? And then third, something that wasn't perfect at Oregon this year is the on the field. How does Baylor look on the field with him running the defense? At Oregon last year, his defense wasn't bad. They weren't spectacular. How many Oregon games did you turn on and think, wow, what a great defense? That Georgia, namely, it's like the one Oregon game I watched start to finish. They lost to Georgia 49 to three. And my thought throughout the game was, yes, it's Georgia, number one in the country, was, man, this defense from Oregon is getting slapped. They gave up 41 points to Washington State. His defense gave up 30 to a good UCLA team, gave up 37 in a loss to Washington, gave up 38 in a loss to Oregon State, but also held number 10 Utah to 17 points. So some con- inconsistency with the Oregon defense and Powell's this season, but how much do you put on your first year co-defensive coordinator? It's... Again, why I don't give this a home run. What do you have to show? Like, all right, Matt Powledge is well-respected in the game of football, but we don't have like a lot of, you know, he's the defensive, he he, he calls the defense. Ah, we don't really know how, how that looks for him. That's still a question mark. So it's the third question mark on the report card, but it's still on the report card. It's something that I, you're going to, you're going to need to see from Matt Powledge the defense actually make the turn for the Bears. The Oregon defense, fifth in the Pac-12 in points allowed. Their pass defense was sixth in the, in the Pac-12, allowing 256 passing yards, namely behind teams like Oregon State, Arizona State, Stanford. The rushing defense was fourth in the league. Their total defense was fourth in the league, allowing 382 yards per game. I don't think... Uh, they were seventh in the league, by the way, in yards per play. I, I don't think the Pac-12 and defense really resonate together, but so I would hope he's on the upper half of the Pac-12, which he is, at least in most of these categories, out of the 12 teams. And then turnovers force. Oregon was fourth in the league in turnovers force. So, no, his defense didn't really jump off the page at Oregon in his one year as co-DC, but you got to bring back the 2021 Baylor defense and what that brought to Waco because it brought a Sugar Bowl championship. It wasn't the offense that was the driver. And to be honest with you, the offense wasn't the driver in 2022 either. The games that Baylor won handedly, Texas Tech, namely, is where the defense stepped up big time. And Matt Powledge, bring that back to Waco in a in a consistent fashion. That's your third thing on the report card. Those three things, how I'll measure what this hire pans out to be for Baylor, this ground rule, late inning ground rule double. Now, Matt Mosley has a lot of thoughts. 
on Matt Powledge, two great names being at Baylor. But first, I'll tell you about NHTSA, one of our new sponsors here at Locked On. NHTSA. You're hanging out with some friends, putting a few back, and a few becomes too many. As the evening comes to an end, you start to head out. You think of calling for a ride, but no, you live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? Well, what's the worst could happen? Uh, your insurance could go up. You'll lose your license. You could lose your job. You could total your car. You could even lose your life or kill someone else. Everyone knows about the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe, plan ahead, get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever drive sober or get pulled over. All right, we now bring on Matt Mosley, the Matt Mosley Show on ESPN 1660. Matt, this Matt Powledge hire is, I referenced it at the beginning of the podcast as it's not a home run, but it's a really, a really solid late inning ground rule double that at least gets somebody home just because there's youth there and a lot of question marks. But when you think Matt Powledge, this hire, what do you think? Well, I, I, it goes to what Dave Aranda keeps trying to tell us and what Mac Rhodes told me recently that I think they wanted somebody young, not that older coaches can't connect with players, but if you listen to what they were saying, for whatever reason, there was, and boy, throughout the season, if you'll recall, Dave Aranda kept talking about trying to get coaches not to weaponize, you know, uh, poor play or, 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 or get so upset with players. There was just something that Dave Aranda needed that he wasn't getting, even though he obviously had a long, great relationship with Ron Roberts. So they needed a change. And Powledge brings relative youth. I think, what is he, 35 years old? Yeah. I think he's a rising uh, star in the coaching community. And, you know, what it does is it brings a guy in that was just here, and not long ago, and they were great at safety. I mean, let's think about it with Petrie and JT Woods, and even the way Morgan was playing the previous season. Uh, I'm talking about the 2021, the great season for Baylor. I I think I think this is probably I think they hated losing him, mm. and uh, talking about Pallage, and this was obviously a way to get him back. And, you know, I, I think, and again, you're right. I mean, I don't think the Oregon people are feeling quite like the Baylor family felt like after the whole Novosad thing. I don't think they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this, this has been done to us. But I do think there was a credibility both when he was hired from Louisiana, like what he brought special teams and then the way he coached the safeties, I'll just say that I'm kind of hearing other the the like former players, former players' parents, they they held college in high regard in the sense of how he coached, but also how he treated players with respect. Mm. And whether that's fair or not, and I don't want to pretend to act like I was in on every Ron Roberts, you know, some of this may be unfair to him, but there was a belief and I, and Drake, you've probably heard some of it too, that he didn't treat people the right way. Yeah. And th this move having to make that uncomfortable move of firing him. And of course he landed a job immediately mm -hmm. and firing Ronnie wheat. And again, I I'd like to stick mainly with Roberts because I don't know if it'd be fair to put wheat in the same boat. I think you put wheat in the boat of special teams wasn't going particularly well for the bears this year. And they had all kinds of issues there. Yeah. Um, but college younger, more energy, more players coach. And, you know, is this a different era of player? Absolutely. Was, is Ron Roberts from a different era? Yes, he is. Um, so I, I don't think you blame six and seven. 
on Ron Roberts, but I do think this will resonate with the players and even some of these guys that have gone into the portal. I got to say, there might be some there might be some ears perked up, like oh, Palich. Okay, I remember him. I liked him. Yeah. So I think I think this probably Drake, from what I can tell, uh, resonates maybe more with the players. Um, then, then it may be with the fan base, and that's fine. I think that's okay. Yeah, this is, and again, Matt Mosley with us from ESPN 1660 and the Matt Mosley Show. This is a hire that I, I thought Baylor would go after one of those big names that automatically brings in five or ten guys from the transfer portal. And I don't think you got the 20-year coaching experience, former head coach, big name. But you're right. you got a player's coach coming out of where Ron Roberts, Aranda said it in press conferences, there were coaches that had ego issues. And with Ron Roberts being the first one fired, you got to think he's probably in that category of the guys that Aranda didn't didn't jive with well enough for it to work out in the end. But this Palage hire, again, person, it feels like a personality hire, which is going to help in the portal. And how key is that with this, the recruiting aspect for, for Matt Palage? Well, I think it's huge. And I was I went back immediately when I thought this could be. And we saw Bruce Feldman's report um, yesterday, and I kind of started looking back at, at some of what what he had been doing on social media, Palage, and then tried to refresh my memory, Drake, on like maybe who he played a role in bringing to Baylor. And you know, think about the people who have left. There's Blanchard. There's Joey. I mean, um, you could say Nance. I mean, you know, you could you could kind of go down the line with some of these guys, Campbell, whoever. There were a lot of people, and some of those people are at tech now, but there were a lot of people that I don't know if we had a great feel for exactly how big a role they had in the recruiting. But a guy like Blanchard, I mean, like, you know, you kind of find out, like, okay, well, this guy really does seem to connect and with, with, with these high school guys and I think with what happened with Novosad and Brathwaite and, and kind of some of these players from this class, I do think this – I think you're asking the right question when it comes to the recruiting angle of this. I think this could stabilize some things. I mean, again, I don't, I don't want to get into this, oh, this guy's old and he can't recruit. I mean – Ron Roberts is not that much older than Joey McGuire. Joey's, I think, just turned 50 or something like that. Joey's got all the energy in the world. There are great recruiters. I think Orgeron, he might have lost some energy after the national title, and maybe he was living too high on the hog. But there were times where he was one of the greatest recruiters in the country. So it's not always like an age thing. But a guy like Roberts, who's more of an X's and O's, I mean, let's not – he's just not a guy that is that, like, socially – he didn't come across is and, – and, and, Drake, you and I spent a little time around him. He, he didn't – he doesn't just, like, put off this air of this guy's a great recruiter. Like, Grimes is 52 or 53 years old, right? Yeah. But Grimes has a, a great presence about him to whereas I think if a recruit gets around him – I think Grimes is is pretty impressive. I don't. I never thought of that with Ron. I do have. I really have a lot of respect for Ron. So I kind of. At some point, we need to move on and kind of take Ron out of the equation. It's yeah. just hard to do because that's our frame of reference right now, and that's why they made a move because they decided that for whatever reason, Dave decided he wasn't getting what he needed from Ron Roberts. So. The recruiting angle of this, I think, is enormous. And I think the good news is former players and people that were just under Palage in recent years are, are, are really singing the praises. Like what you don't want, <laughs> and I, 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 I worry about this because I'm friends with Joey and I never want to come across on social media like I'm being too like Texas Tech friendly or something like that. But like, you know, with Bernard and um, and JT and whoever else, uh, uh, Petrie, um, 
I, I think I think Joey takes such great pride in those guys that he's almost trying to brand that as like Texas Tech people. And we got to remember as Baylor people, like those are Baylor folks. Those people played at Baylor under Joey. But yeah. Joey does a good job of like trying to bring those in. And he's constantly telling the story. I had somebody bring that up with me the other night. Like, oh, yeah, Joey – Joey sent all those guys to the NFL. Okay, whoa, whoa. I mean, Baylor sent those people. Um, so Joey's probably way better than Dave is about playing the media game, constantly doing interviews, getting on social media. Like, Baylor, Rand is not wired like that, and that's okay. But you need a few people that bring the juice, so to speak to use a word that Dave used the other night after a game. And I do think Pallage is that person. And you kind of need somebody. I mean, you know, if you need to take a little poke at Oregon right now, then this is okay. This is good. And I'm not saying that's why the move was made. I'm just saying this is a exciting young coach. And I think that overcomes any worry about, oh, he hasn't called defense. Well, you got Dave Aranda here. That's your X's and O's. He's going to run Dave's defense. So, I mean, hopefully he's good at this. I mean, I really hope he is, but at least he has watching over him the person believed to be a defensive savant. Matt, I know we're going to get you out of here. So, last one. I called this a ground rule double. You grade this higher. Oh, I give it, I give it a solid. I, I, whew. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too great of. A, I mean, like, I know there's some precincts out there that'll just be a plus across the board because that's right. how they're wired. I would say a solid B might be convinced. Like if we were talking the old school Packard physics, where I got a huge curve with a great, you know, where I mean, Doctor Packard. I made an A in that class and never knew anything about what I was doing. Like I might be able to talk it into a B plus, but I think it's solid. I really do. Like a home run, a plus higher would have been somebody like Leonard coming from Wisconsin with tremendous respect, play caller, NFL wants him. Okay. That's like a, that's a grand slam. Okay. That's Aaron Judge stuff right there. Um, but this is a solid B or B plus. And, uh, and by the way, I think Pallage, uh, who I kind of feel like I've had on my show in the past, back when we were allowed to have coaches on and stuff. And, um, I just always, I always really, um, I really enjoyed him. I, I just think people are going to like him. And again, <laughs> I don't know how people will ever know because we're barely ever allowed to talk to these people, but back, you remember, that was the one good thing about the pandemic is like I, I think they understood we needed some programming help mm -hmm. and so i was like uh, able to interview everybody on aranda's staff and uh drake i'd like to go back to that okay i'd like locked on baylor and esp in central texas the matt mosley show to start getting these guys again but we'll take we just got to take some baby steps there but i'm i'm good with this hire so b or b plus I love it. Matt, love it. Matt, thanks so much thanks for coming so on the show. Time. Hey, buddy, thanks for always being there, jumping on with me, and uh, glad to be able to do it. Give Cameron my best, and uh, tell the tell the Locked On family uh, I said hello, and do not do any simulcasting with Simcox over on the, on the uh, Frogs Locked On, okay? They're a little bit too – they're feeling a little bit too good about themselves, so do not try to drive any traffic over there, okay? You've got You've it. Got Thanks, it. Again, Thanks Matt. again, Matt. All right. Later, Drake. Again, that was Matt Mosley. Thank you to Bet Online for letting us have Matt Mosley on today. It's the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, analysis, all of that. BetOnline.net. Get the latest odds and trends, professional, amateur, high school, not high school, basketball, World Cup, all that stuff. I don't know. World Cup futures, I guess. That's what the read says. Uh, if you love live sports, if you love podcasts, you can find all of that at Bet Online as well. The fastest, easiest way to bet, to wager, use your mobile device. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, Matt Pallage, welcome back to Waco. Good to have you. 
I, I do. I'm excited about this hire. I like what Matt said about recruiting. I like what Matt said about youth. That's going to be huge in this. That's going to be, it has to be huge. It's not going to be, but it has to be huge. How this hire turns, how this hire pushes the needle recruiting wise is going to mean a lot. To this program come back Monday and we will talk more about Matt Powell. We will talk more about Baylor football and basketball and stuff. Um, also, the Mondays, the Iowa State game. Iowa State game's coming up. Be ready for that, too. This has been, it always will be, Locked On. Thank you for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor. Baylor.